So when you go to a hair restoration center, you're going to have a lot of options on treatment plans and styles. What you want to look for is a couple of things in helping you choose a surgeon. And I want to explain to you what goes into a hair consult. So when choosing a surgeon, the first and foremost thing, trumping experience or anything, is that you feel comfortable with them, you feel that you can communicate with them, and you really understand that they know where you're coming from. That being said, for me, one of the first and most important things is the hair consult and getting to know the person. The aspects of the hair consult on top of learning your hair loss history, what treatments you've tried, and where you're at now is most importantly learning your goals for the procedure. I often get people coming in, seeing pictures and marketing from other places, and their goal is to have a Tom Cruise-like hairline, which for most people simply isn't realistic. What I try to do is really assess something reasonable and figuring out what the patient wants. Do they want a, more confidence for pictures? Do they want more confidence on the job? And what is it specifically the look they're going for? If it's something specifically for pictures, we want to focus more on the front. If it's something specifically for dating or the job, we do, and they're shorter people, we need to concentrate more on the top and distribute our, our hair evenly. If it's something just a little bit, then we can even consider options like PRP and Rogaine um, and getting them on an appropriate medical regimen that may be more aggressive than what they're already on. Now, when you're selecting a surgeon, um, the, after meeting them, the things that they should be doing in a consult is looking at your hair overall and from a very close perspective. We can get simple cameras that are uh, available on Amazon for as little as 30 bucks that can provide a high magnification of your scalp um, in a procedure called trichoscopy to look closely at the health of your hair. Once this is done, we generally obtain pictures and look at your hair history to see how you've lost hair and then try to come up with a plan on where we want to regrow the hair. Now, as I mentioned earlier, some of the important decisions that go into this are questions as simple as how tall are you? If you're six foot five, it doesn't really matter what the hair is like at the very top of your head because it's very rare that someone's going to be looking from above at that hairline and we can focus most of your grafting on the front. A huge mistake is to give everyone a similar hairline and a similar design because every patient should be customized differently. Now, when it comes to the actual procedure, even though the, te the technicians help out a lot with implantation, the design of your hairline is very, very critical. The basics that every practitioner should do in order to maintain a natural result is to separate the hair follicles into single unit grafts and multi-unit grafts. When we're talking about the anterior most hairline, that's where we want to place our hair follicles that to have just one hair coming out of them. When we're talking about hairs more posteriorly and where we want to increase density, that's where we want one hair with three, one follicle with three or four hairs coming out of it. These are standard procedures that every office should be doing and should be designing it. It's more about where we design that. A in part of the preoperative analysis should include measurements, distances from the chin to the forehead, and measuring the forehead in different areas to see where there's an asymmetry. Part of creating a natural hairline is actually making something asymmetric. A perfect V-shaped frontal hairline or a perfectly spaced grafts in the exact perfect direction will give you a doll-like appearance. We want them to be almost haphazard, and we want the angles that the hairs are coming out at, which is determined by the angle of insertion, is of critical importance to getting a natural and beautiful hairline result. I hope that helps you understand a little bit about what goes in to planning, creating, and designing your hairline, and all the factors that go into understanding what our patient's goals are and how you should express your goals and understand your goals prior to your consultation. Looking forward, we have some more videos on what can go wrong after surgery and what to expect during the course of your recovery.